In this video, I'd like to talk to you about capacitors. Which are among the most widely used electronic components. <clears throat> capacitors are basically broken circuits. We've always been taught that a circuit, the electricity has to go all the way around. That's not the case for capacitors. But let's imagine we did have a circuit. I don't know, we had um, a power voltage source. And then we broke it. So there's a little gap here. What's going to happen when we turn the voltage source on? Well, electrons are going to get pumped through around here. And so you'll start building up negative charge will accumulate there when it can't get any further. Similarly, electrons are being removed from the side. So positive charges will start appearing over here. But it won't happen for very long. Because before very much time has elapsed, you've got so much negative charge here and so much positive charge there that any more electrons going around here are repelled and can't get any further. So it all stabilizes and no current flows apart from a very brief bit. But now, let's say we have a similar circuit, power source. But now when we break the circuit, we give the electrons more room by having two large metal plates very close to each other, which is what a capacitor is. Now in this case, when you switch the, the fault source on, you get electrons moving around, but now they've got a lot of room to sit. They get positive charges on the side as the electrons are removed from over there. So there's a lot more room, so a lot more charge can move around here before it all gets filled up. And also, you get the positive charges attracting the negative charges, so you get a strong electric field across here, which also helps get more negative charges in by partially cancelling out their field. So that's what a capacitor does. It's a way of having a broken circuit, but with large metal plates close together, so actually a fair bit of electricity can flow in before it fills up. As usual, there's a water analogue for this. So imagine a water circuit. So our wire is a pipe, and imagine that we have a bit of rubber in the middle here. So as the water flows in, the rubber will bend and further and further. So for a brief time, water can flow, but then it will stop because the rubber will bend as far as it's going to go. If you then turn the water supply off, the rubber will come back to this position and push the water back. Just like in the circuit, when you switch the voltage off, the electrons will flow back from here, um, and so you'll get a current going backwards. OK, now let's look at what happens in terms of voltages. So let's imagine we have a circuit with a capacitor and a resistor. And we get a voltage source here, which we just turn on. So what we're doing, we get voltage versus time. The voltage source here, V applied, is zero, and then suddenly gets switched on. But now let's imagine we measure the voltage across here, V capacitor. Again, this is going to be zero. Then, as soon as we switch on the voltage here, electrons are going to start flowing. So you start building up electrons here, which means the voltage across there will start increasing. It keeps increasing, increasing, until the capacitor is full, at which point it'll plateau out at the same voltage here. So the voltage across there will equal the voltage across there. So this is one use for capacitors. It's to smooth out some things like sudden spikes in voltage. Instead of getting a very sharp change in voltage, the capacitor in the circuit gives you a very gentle change in voltage. Another main use is when you get an alternating voltage applied. So now we've got a voltage source. And we're applying an alternating current there, like a sine wave. Once again, we've got a resistor and a capacitor. So if we plot 
voltage against time. The applied voltage. Let's say we have a very slow, low frequency sine wave. So it goes up and down very slowly. So that's the voltage applied. What's the voltage of the capacitor going to look like? Well, because this voltage is increasing very slowly, then decreasing very slowly, there's plenty of time for the electrons to flow in and then flow back out again. So VC, maybe take a little bit slower to get going, and then a little bit slower to come down again. but it'll more or less have the same amplitude as the applied voltage. But now let's say we go to a very rapidly oscillating voltage here. So instead of going up and down slowly, we apply a V-app that goes something like this, high frequency. In this case, the, the VC has less time to react. So sure enough, when the voltage goes up, the electrons will start to flow, but they haven't got very far before it's coming down again. So they might have gone up a bit, then it's coming down again. So then they start coming back out again, but they haven't got time to get all the way out before it's going the other way again. So you end up with a very small oscillation wobbling about in the middle. And if you make the frequency even higher still, something like... The voltage across the... Uh, capacitor almost has no time to get anywhere, the electrons just don't move anywhere. So what you'll find is if you plot V of the source, the applied, over the voltage across the capacitor, against frequency, which is written with the Greek letter nu typically, what you'll find is that when the frequency is very low, they're the same, they've got a value of about 1. The amplitude of one is about the same as the amplitude of the other. But then, once the frequency becomes high enough, it starts to drop off. Because now the capacitor is slowing things down so much that the voltage can't keep up, and so you get less and less amplitude of voltage afterwards. This is an um, alternating current, so we mean like the amplitude of the waves. This is what's called a low pass filter because it allows low frequencies through but the high frequencies are cut off, widely used in electronics.